Hey, welcome back. Today I have to solve a little geometric problem while machining this part. Unfortunately, I cannot show this complete part because the customer asked me not to do. And uh, of course I'm respecting that, but he told me that I can show part of it and also the machining on it. So here we go. Basic setup is I have my spin fixture here at 45 degree in a vise. And I have an ER11 collet chuck with a straight chain clamped in here. And this ER11 chuck is holding the actual part with a collet. And here I'm checking the run out and it's a little bit over 10 microns. So perfectly fine for this application. And what we need to do is we need to drill a hole here at under 45 degree with a given distance off the end of the part. The problem is edge finding on here or finding a proper zero reference in, in this orientation is kind of tricky on a part like this. But there is a neat trick to do this and that's called a tooling ball. Tooling ball is basically a precise ball with a shank. Uh, Joe Pai has done a very good video on tooling balls and their application. But in this case, we're not going to use a tooling ball because I don't have one. We're going to use a regular ball bearing. Here is the upper section of the part I just set up on the mill. And here you can see the, the 45 degree angled hole that we're going to drill. And up here is a countersink. And how do you now get from here to here. That's fairly easy. We put in a... We create a sketch and draw a circle that of course contacts the edge of the of the counter bore here in two points. And then we put a center line into the diameter of the bore, of the 45 degree bore that we're going to drill here. And we create a line that's going from the center of this sphere or um, circle to the center line of this, uh, of this cross hole. And that's what we need to do. So we put in a ball with 4 mm diameter in this counter, counter bore, center on it using a dial test indicator. Then we move over 5.705 millimeters and then we drill our hole. Index the part by 180 degree and drill the second one. Fairly straightforward and a very precise way to do it. The problem is uh, the ball will always fall out because, uh, well, it's just sitting there. But that's a problem that we can solve by a little bit of super glue. We're back at the machine. Let's use some some acetone to, to, to make sure that the bore here is, is reasonable clean so we can glue to it. And I also found a 4mm ball bearing. Well, I took one out of the, out of the box for 4mm ball bearing. We're using some black super glue. This is a rubber reinforced super glue like a similar to Loctite Black Max. So, and we add a tiny bit to the edge of the bore. Take the ball bearing, put it on here, and hope that we don't glue ourselves to the part as usual. Make sure it's firmly seated into the counter bore in this case. Otherwise we will get some uh, rather large discrep discrepancy in accuracy and we don't want that. So it should be, should be reasonably tight. We'll add some more super glue around the around the intersection of those two pieces. Just like this. So the pressure of the indicator, once we dial the small ball bearing in with an indicator, doesn't push it off. 
So now is the moment when we bring the dial test indicator in. And for rough alignment, since we have a drill chuck in the spindle already, why not use a pointer? That's a very quick way to get a, a rough alignment like this. Now I can use the indicator to dial it in. Now I'm just dialing in this ball bearing with the dial test indicator as any round feature with the only difference that we're only striking half an arc, slightly more than 180 degrees. I could go a little bit higher and do a full circle higher than the equator of the ball, but then you get in a weird um, contact situation on the dial test indicator where the accuracy might drop off. So we're going to the equator of the ball and do our indicating like this. This is more reliable in my eyes. Yeah, this takes some time, but it's a fairly good process. And while we're here, we can also check if we glued the ball on straight just by spinning, just by spinning the part. And that's like 20 microns. Um, for what we're doing here, this is more than adequate. <laughs> so zero out the DRO. Now we are in the center line of this ball bearing. Uh, that's the zero position that I modeled in CAD. Now we move over 5.705 millimeters, 5.705, uh, use an end mill to create a start and then change to a one millimeter drill and drill to final depth. And when we're done, we're just going to snap this ball bearing off and clean the remaining super glue off with some acetone. 180, 180 degrees indexing, I'm using the stop and and this, this pin here. This gives me 100, about 180 degrees and this shot pin back here does the real indexing. But these stops make it very fast to go from 0 to 180 degrees. And since I made more than one part, uh, this is very convenient. So start here, have, have the pin drop, so it's locked. We could also use the clamping lock, but we're just drilling. Okay, close up time. This is a one millimeter three flute carbide end mill that's unfortunately relieved a little bit in back here. So uh, we're losing rigidity, but should do fine. It should do fine. Well, we are running at 3000 RPM and just packing a little bit into the material to create a spot where we can start with the one millimeter drill. There we go. Now we change to a drill chuck and a one millimeter drill. Okay, here we are. One millimeter drill bit running at 3000 RPM and using a little bit of cutting oil. That's not 3000 RPM.
So obviously I didn't drill all the way through. Uh, these two angled holes meet up through into a central hole that's coming in for, into the part from the other side. So we're not going to see the exit hole, of course. So let's get rid of this ball bearing. Parallel pliers, just uh, snap it off. And the remaining super glue will come off with some acetone, of course. I hope you enjoyed this little drilling problem or hole locating problem. Thank you for watching and I'll be back. <laughs>